Uh, my name is Michael Carlton. I'm an artist, interior designer, and I create art and interior installations that bring an uplifting and uh, positive vibration into the spaces in which they're created. Yeah, like, like one, of, one of the things that I really like a lot about um, Michael's artwork is that so, so much of it, you could just kind of stare at it and it draws you in and I mean, different some pieces draw it at least for me, draw my attention in more than others, but um, regardless, they all just kind of draw you in like this. Um, I got into art kind of by accident. Um, I didn't go to art school. Um, I did art at GCSE. I did technical drawing at GCSE. Um, but when I graduated from university, I started keeping notebooks of sketches and drawings and doodles and ideas and so on. Um, yeah, and I kind of started developing them up into bigger pieces and someone was looking through my books and was like, well, you know, these are, these are, these are works in themselves, these are, you should exhibit these. So I decided to colour them in, uh, did them on paper rather than the books, got them framed, um, had an exhibition and then just became an artist that way. I didn't do art at school, I did, well, I did GCSE art, I did technical um, drawing at GCSE as well. But I didn't go to art school. Um, I studied more science at college and at university. Um, but yeah, so once I graduated, then I started to explore my creative side. It's not something that I set out to um, become. I never thought I'd become an artist. I just sort of became an artist um, almost by accident. I really, really love Michael's art. Um, I've got some of his artwork, namely this piece back here, the res residue gone, um, and the pyramids in my home, as well as a few other pieces. So it's really great to see this in a different space, other than my bedroom. Um, but I'm loving his new work here. Um, I know Eddie, who um, he's based the rays on the heart coming out of, um, and then this crystal ceiling, which is amazing to have a look at. It is so awesome. One day, I hope to be lucky enough to have a miniature little crystal ceiling of my own, it's really, really great. What is, what is behind your thoughts when you're doing all these? Does it just come out as you...? Just, yeah, my thoughts... Um, so with this piece and the pieces in this style, I start with a colour scheme. Um, so this was the, this, the very first piece I did in that style. Yeah. Um, it was just taking a few colours, so in here is a theme of blue, and just doing shapes with those colours. So doing a shape, taking the next pen, doing another shape, just keeping going, yeah. basically building it up one step at a time until the whole page is filled, mm -hmm. then doing the outline and then it's done. So there is um, yeah, I've had a few difficult periods. I think every artist has their own um, doubts and fears that can blow out of proportion, I think, especially with creative people and imaginative people. Those um, fears and demons can seem a lot uh, bigger and scarier than they actually are. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a journey, I have to say. I kind of always knew that it would be, but um, it's been a character-building one for me. Um, yeah, I think the difficult periods come really just when I'm not working. So I think it's a little bit like when an actor is acting, when they're not acting, what do they do? Um, so I kind of sometimes feel a little bit of emptiness if I'm not not doing something creative and again I think a lot of creatives feel that way it's like a, a drive that they have to create new things um, and when they don't have the opportunity to do that that energy can sometimes get stuck in places and that can, that can cause difficulties. And this is very much a part of my creativity it's actually started I started, it was actually whilst I was working in a crystal shop that I started doing, keeping the doodles and the sketchbooks because there was quite a lot of downtime. And I was surrounded by the stones. Um, I noticed like a really big difference to how I felt. I really felt the stones were having an effect, a positive effect on me. Um, I got into being an artist from the design for this ceiling, actually. I was showing someone the design for that. And he was like, well, look, even if you don't design this thing, the picture that you've done here is a work of art, so that's what got me into thinking, okay, well, maybe I can turn my designs into pictures rather than having to make them all as well. Um, and yeah, I just try to kind of get 
I like the, all the different colours of the stones and I try to bring that into the work that I do and all the work that I have is very, it's got a, quite a molecular structure to it. They've got quite a crystalline structure, quite a fluid structure to, to it. So I very much feel like the, 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 the crystal stones is a source of inspiration and source of um, creativity in my work. Spaces, so with a lot of the um, interior creations that I do, I'm looking at the feng shui, I'm looking at how energy is moving around, what it feels like to be within that environment. So I use crystals for that. I use um, images as well. The paintings that I paint directly onto the wall, the way the shapes move is the way I feel the energy is moving through the room. And also, um, I can use the shapes to create a different flow of energy going through the room. And also, as people look at it, it alters their perspective, alters their consciousness, if you like. So yeah, it's all, all interconnected. Okay, I would say to people who are um, wanting to express their creativity and to express themselves, so just explore that. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Um, explore and have fun with what you're doing. Um, I'd say don't be afraid to uh, share it with other people. Um, a lot of my early works I had almost written off, but when I showed them to people and they, they really genuinely liked them, then I saw them in a different light. So um, you never really know what other people are going to like. Sometimes it can be difficult, you know, you do open yourself up to some criticism, so just be aware of that, don't take it too personally. Um, yeah, so take take feedback, take, take what you can from your feedback, um, focus on the positive feedback you get, maybe look at some of the negative feedback and see whether that's just that person is in a bad mood or whether it's an area for you to improve. But yeah, persevere with it. Um, Try and do something every day, even if it's for just 15 minutes. It's better to do a little bit every so often than it is to try and do everything in one go. Um, yeah, I like to think of my art as, it's almost like gardening for me. It sort of needs to be nurtured, it needs to, to grow, has a life of its own. So if you look at your creativity in that way, um, it might help overcome any, any fears or any doubts. Um, and yeah, just know that people, the world is a, is, a, is a nicer place because of art. And if you're bringing something creative to the world, you're bringing something to people. So if you don't, if you don't bring that to them, it's almost like you're denying them something. So you have a, a, almost a, a, a sort of an obligation. I know this doesn't sound very nice, but if you look at it that way, that you're doing it for other people as well, that can also really help you to perhaps overcome any fears you might have about expressing your creativity.